The term shadow work scares the crap out of a lot of people when they first hear it. I'm afraid of ghosts! But the shadow is not a ghost. Oh. Oh. Thanks, I feel much better. So what is shadow work really and why are we so afraid of doing it? In this video, we'll go deep on what the shadow is and how to spot it in yourself, why shadow work is crucial for you to do, and then I'll share my top five tips to help you do shadow work like a boss. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share weekly tips that you won't find here on YouTube. Today we're going deep on the shadow and shadow work and I've divided this video into four parts to make it easier for you. In part one, we're going to discuss what the shadow is. Then in part two, we're going to understand the problem. What's the problem with the shadow? Then in part three, I'm going to share four easy ways for you to spot your shadow in yourself. And then in, in part four of the video, I'm going to discuss my top five powerful tips to help you do shadow work like a master. Let's get started. Part number one of the video is what is the shadow? <laughs> so usually when we're talking about the shadow, people can sometimes get really scared because they immediately associate the term shadow with something that's bad or evil, all right? So I wanna clear that up right off the bat in this video. The shadow is not evil. That We're not talking about any kind of evil. That's not what's happening here, all right? So let's clear that up right away. There's nothing to be scared of. And so to go into the definition a little bit more, I'm going to show you the psychology definition and then deeper uh, into a spiritual definition. So from a psychological perspective, the shadow and shadow work, these are terms that were first brought into the Western world by psychologist Carl Jung. And Carl Jung basically describes the shadow as the unconscious part of your personality, unconscious or disowned part of your personality, all right? So that's how Jung describes the shadow. And for, for Jung, really, what the shadow is, it's, it's literally almost like thinking of an actual shadow that's, that is cast when you're walking down the street in the sun and the, the sun hits you, you're gonna cast, your body's gonna cast a shadow on the floor, in front of you, behind you, next to you, wherever, depending on the angle of, the, of where the sun's hitting you. And so when you're walking down the street, nobody pays attention to their shadow, right? You just keep walking down the street. No attention whatsoever to the shadow. And that's essentially what Jung is saying, is that your shadow is a disowned or unconscious part of your personality. To Jung and to the field of psychology, the shadow is really something that's born in your childhood depending on what's going on in your childhood with your family, all right? So to Jungian psychology, the shadow is born in childhood as a byproduct of certain interactions that you have with your family, all right? When your family, when your parents start projecting their beliefs and their understanding of the world onto you, that's where the shadow is born according to Jung, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example of how this works. Let's say that you're a sensitive little boy, all right? You're a sensitive little boy, you really feel the world, you cry very easily, you're just super sensitive. And then your parents come along and they start saying to you, stop crying, you're always so emotional, you cry like a girl, okay? So as soon as the parents project these beliefs onto the child, now the little sensitive boy has a problem, right? He's got a problem because there's a part of him, his sensitive side is not being accepted by his caretakers. And so what does the child do? The child will learn how to repress their sensitivities, all right? The day that that little boy represses his sensitive side is the day that his shadow is born, according to Jung. And as soon as this beautiful, sensitive little boy starts repressing certain parts of him, he's gonna keep doing this throughout his life, depending on what the feedback is from the outside world and what the projections are onto him, all right? So that's the beginning of his shadow, and then it's just gonna keep growing and growing as he represses or does not accept certain parts of himself, all right? So that's essentially how Jung sees it and the field of psychology see it. The, the shadow is something, is an unconscious 
part or disowned part of your personality that is born in childhood, all right? Now, if you've watched my videos, you know that now I'm gonna go deeper because I like to go way deeper than psychology in my videos. So we're going to add to this definition uh, of shadow that, that exists in psychology and in Jungian psychology, all right? So shadow work, although shadow and shadow work, I respect uh, Carl Jung's work a lot. And although these terms were brought into the Western world by psychology and by Jung, shadow work and the shadow has been known for thousands of years and it's been worked on for thousands of years by shamanic cultures all over the world. In fact, shamans are renowned, renowned healers that are experts in shadow work, all right? So all of this talk about shadows and shadow work were going on way before Jung, all right? But it was just that Jung brought it into more mainstream Western thought, all right? So shadow and shadow work is the expertise of shamanism for sure. And so now I want to get into the spiritual uh, definition of it so that you understand a little bit of the differences and we can go deeper. So from a spiritual perspective, the shadow is any part of you that you do not see, acknowledge, or accept in yourself. Okay, so, so notice the difference in this definition. It's any part of you that you do not see, acknowledge, or accept, meaning it's not just personality, ding, ding. Okay, so the shadow is not just something that exists in your psyche. The shadow is multifaceted from a spiritual perspective, and parts of the shadow, facets of the shadow, can exist outside of the mind. And this is important to keep in mind because, as I've said in multiple videos before, whenever I talk about psychology and healing, if you're trying to heal something from only your mind, you're never going to get there. All right. So in order for us to fully heal and integrate the shadow, we have to understand that it's not just a mind phenomenon, it's multifaceted and it's present in various parts of you. So here's a better way of understanding the shadow from a spiritual perspective and to see how multifaceted it is and how it doesn't just exist in your mind. So here's a picture of the seven chakra system. And for the purpose of this conversation, all I want you to remember about these seven chakras is that each one of your chakras is sort of like a mini brain, okay? So think of it like a mini brain. Your seven chakras, each one of them, they have their own consciousness. They think for themselves, all right? So, so think of chakras in this way. They have their level of consciousness and they think for themselves, independent of each other and independent of your mind, okay? So let's take the example of the little boy that I just shared a little while ago, the sensitive little boy who was being reprimanded by his parents for crying. And so he started to shut down, right? He started to create his shadow by pushing away certain parts of him that were unacceptable to those outside of him. So that's the part of the psyche is that he starts to evaluate and he's like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, there are parts of me that aren't being accepted. This sensitivity isn't being accepted. So he's thinking through this, but the spiritual thing that's going on that I want you to pay attention to is for this little boy to repress his sensitive side, what do you think he's going to do on a spiritual level? That's the question, right? What will he do on the spiritual level? He's going to have to shut down what makes him sensitive in the first place. And that is ding, ding, his heart chakra. He's going to shut down his heart chakra in response to being reprimanded for being sensitive. So you see, the shadow then is not just in his thoughts. The shadow then is also present in his chakras because he shuts down a certain part of himself at the chakra of the heart because that's where sensitivity and compassion and love is felt. All right. So this is an example of how the shadow operates in a multifaceted way, taking the definition of Jung way beyond just the personality and into the spiritual part, the quantum part and your electromagnetic field and chakras, all of these complex uh, facets of who you are. And here's another difference between the view on shadow between psychology and spirituality. So from a psychology perspective, your shadow is born in your childhood, but from a spiritual perspective, your shadow can actually be born in past lives. <laughs> so you see, because the spiritual perspective is so broad and there's an understanding that your soul comes here many times and is on this multi-lifetime uh, expansion, your shadow, parts of your shadow that you carry today, 
can actually be coming from past lives, not just from this childhood. You can have aspects of your shadow that are born in this childhood, in this lifetime, but there's a lot of your shadow that you're bringing from the past, from past lives. And that's also important to remember. So this is the spiritual perspective on when the shadow was born. To go more into past lives, I went into reincarnation and past lives in recent videos. There are two of them. I did a two part series on this. I'm going to leave links to those videos in the description box below. If you want to go deeper into reincarnation and past lives and how to work with past lives. In one of those videos that I shot on reincarnation, I talked about how the soul programs unhealed stuff from the past in your current life so that you could deal with it and heal it on the spot. All right. And part of this unhealed and unprocessed energy that the soul programs from past lives into your current one is precisely aspects of the shadow. <laughs> okay. So your soul does this on purpose. It programs these aspects of the shadow so that you can finally see it and integrate it in this current lifetime. Now you may be asking yourself, you know, is this just a question of semantics? Like, why do I need to know? Why is it important to know that my shadow is actually coming from past lives and not just this childhood? Who cares? You know, the answer to that question is, is that if you think that your shadow is only coming from this childhood, you will be missing pieces of it. You will totally be missing pieces of it. And whatever you miss, you can't integrate, you can't work through. And I'll give you an example of how this worked in my life. So one of my biggest shadow aspects that I have had to heal in this lifetime is my I was just scared shitless of coming into my power. I was afraid of my power. All right. Now, mind you, this fear of my power, I repressed my power for many years of my life. I made myself small. <laughs> I made myself small at first. It was unconscious, but I made myself small. So I wouldn't stand out. All right. I was afraid of coming into my power. Now, if I were to just look at my childhood, I would have never caught this aspect of my, of my shadow because it wasn't born in this childhood. I had parents who were very supportive, especially my mom. My mom had been had grown up in abject poverty and she, but she instilled in her children, this idea that we could be and do whatever we set our minds to. So my mom was very instrumental in working my ability to come into my power, to free myself, to be whoever I wanted. You see, so I wasn't getting this programming. I wasn't forced to repress my power in childhood because I had supportive parents. So that's not where it was coming. It wasn't until years later when I started to work with past lives and I started to do all this healing work. It was only then that I understood that the fear that I had of my power was because I had tried to step into my power in past lives and really horrible things had happened to me. This is really common with light workers. Light workers oftentimes try to step in their power in past lives and they're either burned at the stake, they're stoned or horrible things happen to them when a light worker comes into their power. And so I carried that aspect, that shadow aspect forward into this lifetime. And that's why I started early on to push and to disown my power precisely because of that. So you see, it wasn't from this childhood. If I had missed that, if I had just studied the shadow from a, a one lifetime perspective, perspective, I would have totally missed that. And in fact, if I hadn't done that work, I wouldn't be standing right here in front of this camera. Here's an important other side note that I want to leave a ding ding here on, on the, on the shadow, because I want to make clear that although there are certain negative aspects of the shadow and usually the negative aspects of the shadow are the ones that really bother us and affect our lives the most, the shadow isn't just negative. Okay. So it's important for you to remember that your shadow contains both positive and negative qualities. All right. This is really important. It's not talked about as much because we focus more on the negative side of the shadow, but your shadow contains so much untapped potential gifts and talents that you just simply have not unearthed yet. All right. So it's important to remember that your shadow doesn't just have negativity. It's got negative and positive qualities also. So if my shadow contains positive qualities also, why is it a part of my shadow? You know, that's another interesting question. If, if the shadow is all of the unacknowledged and repressed and disowned part of me, why the heck would I disown my gifts and my talents? That doesn't make to make a lot of sense right? 
but it does if you if you paid attention to my to my example I my power my spiritual power I had repressed it that was a talent and a gift of mine but I had repressed it because bad things had happened to me in the past so usually the reason that positive aspects or gifts and talents can be also contained in the shadow is because we're afraid of tapping into that okay so the emotion that really pushes our gifts some of our gifts and talents into the shadow is fear okay so remember that because you're gonna need to work through this fear later on when I'm discussing how to do shadow work okay on to the second part of the video and that is the problem with the shadow <laughs> all right so now that you know what the shadow is and that there's nothing to be afraid of when doing shadow work then the next question is who cares <laughs> like why should I even care about the shadow how does it affect me <laughs> and the answer to that is that it really affects you because what your shadow is your shadow is operating outside of your conscious awareness in the form of unconscious beliefs energy imprints it's operating it sort of has a life of its own and that shadow can profoundly profoundly affect your behavior and your life experiences ding ding your shadow can profoundly affect your behavior and life experiences all right now from a spiritual perspective so that you can see this from an energy more from an energy perspective let me let me give you an example of what this looks like so from an energy perspective when you're looking at someone's shadow for the people that can see shadows they can see you know with their third eye and have psychic gifts and all that when they're looking at the shadow of a person it almost looks like a separate entity all right so you can think of your shadow as an inner fragment so it's it's almost like you are fragmented there's inner fragmentation within you and it's almost like two different people are operating inside of you all right and we've all seen examples of this before so have you ever met a person who just is so kind so sweet so gentle but then boom with a snap of her freaking finger something happens and that person turns into a devil <laughs> so have you ever met a person like that they just freak out they have a temper tantrum whatever it is have you ever met someone like that because this is really common and what's happening here what happened what happened to this gentle kind person how did they turn into a crazy devil in the next minute and the reason is because they have these two parts of them operating all right they're fragmented the shadow is really powerful in them and the shadow takes over when that person is triggered all right so this is a good example of how that shadow can affect you and how profoundly it could affect you I mean it could really turn your life upside down causing chaos especially in relationships but really in all life experiences but especially in relationships the shadow has the potential to destroy relationships so that's one of the main reasons why it needs to be seen and worked through another way that the shadow really affects you and that's why you really have to pay attention to it is that when that shadow operates as an as a separate entity it has its own energy field almost and so what ends up happening is that energy field because we live in a universe that's energy based it's resonance based what's going to happen is your shadow by its own vibration is going to start calling to you like energy ding ding what this means is that your shadow will start magnetizing to itself experiences that resonate with the vibration of the shadow so guess what's going to happen in your life your shadow is going to tr attract all kinds of drama and all kinds of painful experiences if it keeps magnetizing to you all of this like energy all right so this is another way in which your shadow really really affects you and and it really needs to be worked on if you haven't noticed yet part number three of the video is how to spot the shadow <laughs> okay so now that we know what the shadow is and why we should even care about it how do we spot it because sometimes it, it can be a little difficult to spot the shadow especially the more unconscious we live right but if you've been watching my videos you're on your spiritual awakening so you've already started to understand all these things from a spiritual perspective so now it's going to be easier for you to spot your shadow but it can be difficult to spot for many years especially before we spiritually awaken awaken all right so here are four easy ways for you to spot your shadow and start working with it right away the first way and one of the easiest ways to spot your shadow is through projections <laughs> okay so 
In this, in this way, what you're doing is you're going to start to pay attention to how you outwardly project yourself into the outside world. All right. The way that you project into the outside world is very revealing when it comes to the shadow. Okay. And I'll give you an example from my own life. So I was first introduced to the world of projections really early on in my life. When, even before I was a teenager, I had a really problematic relationship with my father and for years years, it was a, a, a very difficult relationship for me. And for years I would just look at my father and I'd just be so pissed off. You know, you're so stubborn and you're so, you're like a brick wall. You never express emotions. You're just like, and, and I remember I, I thought of my father in that way. He was stubborn. He was like a brick wall. He was emotionless. He never expressed his love towards me. So I would throw all of these projections out on my father. Well, it wasn't until years later, many years after my father died, I started to do this spiritual work and ding, ding, I started to do my shadow work. And what happened? I started to notice that all of the projections that I had thrown on my father were actually mirrors of me at the time. So my father was stubborn just like me. <laughs> my father was closed hearted, just like me at that moment. You see, my father was emotionless, just like me at that moment in my life. You see, so the strong projections, really powerful emotional projections that I had been throwing on my father were actually a reflection of me. It was my shadow operating. So pay attention to your projections, how you see the world and how you see others. Okay. Whatever I dislike in someone else, ding, ding, it's in me somewhere because if it weren't in me, I wouldn't be bothered by anything in the outside environment. Okay. So paying attention to your projections is the easiest way to spot your shadow, especially initially. The second way to spot your shadow is through emotional triggers. This one's easy too, but sometimes it's hard to hold back. <laughs> it's hard to be aware of this. So emotional triggers is basically, you're going to start to pay attention what triggers you. All right. I've talked about this in, in videos before, but this is one of my favorite mantras and I'm going to leave it with you in case you haven't heard me say this before. One of my favorite mantras is triggers are my best friends. <laughs> okay. So triggers are your best friends. And the reason that they are is because they will start to show you your wounds and your shadow self really easily. Okay. So start to pay attention to your emotional reactions, to your emotional triggers. And I'll give you an example of this. Let's say you are out and about with your partner as you're at a party or whatever, and your partner starts to talk to someone who's attractive and you immediately have this feeling of overwhelming feeling of jealousy. Okay. It starts to overtake you feeling of jealousy. Now, if you're doing your shadow work and you're paying attention and you know that the shadow exists, you're going to take a nice deep breath and you'll catch yourself. And the first thing that you should ask yourself, instead of letting the shadow take over and going over to your partner and slapping him in the face for talking to an attractive woman, that's what we do when we are unaware of the shadow, the shadow takes over and affects our behavior. But before doing that, you take a nice deep breath and you just ask yourself, why am I feeling this? Okay. The moment that you ask that question, you'll start to go deeper into the shadow aspects. The reason that you're feeling jealous is because you're afraid that your partner's going to leave you for someone else. Okay. This is just an example you see. So that fear, that abandonment, that's all been repressed and disowned in you. It's part of the shadow aspect. And so it's playing out because it hasn't been acknowledged and seen and worked through. So you see, catch your emotional triggers, whatever they are. This was just an example I gave you, but catch your emotional triggers, especially before you act out on them. Okay. Because every single time I act out through my shadow, my shadow gets bigger. Ding, ding. Let me leave. This as a side note. Ding, ding. Every time I act out from my shadow, my shadow gets bigger because there's more energy being siphoned into it. There's more energy being sucked into it. The shadow gets bigger every time I feed it. Okay. So this is a good way to kind of start making that shadow calm down a little bit is to catch your emotional triggers, especially before you act out on them. The third way to spot your shadow is by using patterns. Okay. So 
In this, in this tip, what you're going to do is you're going to start paying attention to repeating patterns in your life. Okay. Repeating patterns, repeating experiences. When the story starts to repeat, repeat itself, you can be certain that there are aspects of the shadow operating there. Okay. And I'll give you an example from my own life. For years, I had this pesky shadow aspect that was a part of me that I didn't see and that I didn't recognize. And that was that I would lose myself in relationships. So when I entered a romantic relationship, I would just lose myself. Suddenly Tina was completely gone and I was just living for the other person. Okay. This was a really pesky habit. It was an aspect of my shadow that I didn't recognize. Okay. And so when I finally started to do shadow work and I started to recognize this pattern, it, I saw that it was a pattern in multiple relationships. So then you understand that it's a part of your shadow. Okay. So check out patterns, pay attention to patterns in your life. And within those patterns, you're going to find aspects of your shadow. The fourth way to spot your shadow is to do introspection. Okay. So introspection is, it could be a little bit harder than the other steps because in the other steps, you basically just have to pay attention when your projections and when your shadow is triggered and then you catch it right in this step, it's more introspective work. So you're getting to spot the shadow before it actually act out, acts out or is triggered. Okay. So in this introspection step, what you're going to do, it's, this is actually a journaling exercise. All right. You're going to ask yourself three crucial questions. That's going to get you right to your shadow. <laughs> you're going to ask yourself three questions and you're going to journal about them. All right. The three questions are these. The first one is what do, what parts of yourself do you dislike? Okay. So what parts of yourself do you dislike? Question one, what parts of yourself do you judge? Question two, and what parts of yourself do you fear? Okay. So these are three questions that are crucial for you to ask. When you start journaling the answers to these questions, you're going to be presented to aspects of your shadow self. Now to the fourth part of the video, and that is how to do shadow work. <laughs> So I'm going to give you some ground rules here. Uh, I'm going to be sharing five powerful tips to help you do shadow work. But I wanted to start off by saying that shadow work, the goal of shadow work, it's important for you to understand the goal of shadow work. The goal of shadow work is integration. Ding, ding. Okay. The goal of shadow work is integration, meaning that you are basically bringing your shadow into yourself more and more. You're bringing more light into the shadow. Once you bring more light into the shadow, you illuminate it. When you illuminate darkness, guess what happens? The darkness starts to disappear. There's, that's really what it is. Okay. So integration work is about bringing the shadow closer to you loving it, shining light on it. The more you shine light on the shadow, the smaller and smaller it gets. Okay. So from an energy perspective, we've already talked about this, the bigger my shadow is. So the more things that I disown and don't accept in myself, the bigger my shadow, the bigger my shadow, the more it's going to affect my life the smaller the shadow, the less it's going to affect my life. All right. So that's from an energy perspective, how the shadow works. Okay. So now let's go to the top five tips on how you can do shadow work, AKA how you can integrate your shadow back into yourself. Tip number one is do not antagonize the shadow. <laughs> okay. So this work, this work is just, this is about so much love and compassion and self acceptance. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> okay. This is about self acceptance because remember your shadow was born, whether it was born in this childhood or in past lives, doesn't matter, but your, sh your shadow was born from non acceptance, right? Because your shadow was born the moment you started to push away certain aspects of yourself that you deemed unacceptable for whatever reason. So if you're doing shadow work, don't antagonize the shadow because you'll only be adding more non acceptance, right? So you, the antidote to this is complete self acceptance of everything that I am, including my shadow, because the shadow is part of me. Okay. So don't antagonize the shadow. When you spot your shadow, love it, accept it, bring it close to you. That's the, that's the key. Okay. That's the key. Self acceptance, no pushing away, no antagonizing, no fighting with your shadow. 
The second tip is observation without judgment. Okay. This is key also because when you become aware of the shadow and you start to do the observation work, you start to use the exercises to spot your shadow. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is to start judging the shadow. Okay. Because if you judge the shadow, if you let that inner critic come up and start judging the shadow, you're again, adding fuel to the fire. You're only making it bigger and you're not doing the integration work because integration work has to do with love and self acceptance. Okay. And I'll give you an example of how this works. So you could see this clearly and spot it in yourself. So let's say that let's go back to the woman who was jealous because her partner was talking to an attractive woman at a party. Okay. If I, if I'm doing my shadow work and I'm aware of my shadow and I catch myself, I don't go over there and slap him in the face. So at least I caught my shadow. All right. I caught it. I asked the question, why am I feeling this? Oh, there's a shadow aspect of me. Okay. Why am I feeling this? But if I, if I spot the jealousy and then I let the inner critic come in and the inner critic will start saying, Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. Like so stupid. Why would I be jealous? You see, that's the inner critic. The moment that I add judgment to my observation of the jealousy, I'm making the shadow bigger because judgment is a form of non-acceptance. Ding, ding. And so if I let my inner critic come in and start criticizing myself, for having a shadow or for having a shadow aspect, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing shadow work. Okay. So observation without judgment means I catch the jealousy. I observe it. And then I don't add any judgment to it. I realize that I'm a beautiful, beautiful divine being that's loved. I don't judge myself for having jealousy. I'm just human. Okay. So catch yourself. All right. Shadow work has to do with observation without judgment. Just catch the shadow, observe it, bring light, and then integrate it. No letting the inner critic take over. Cause then you're going to be making the shadow bigger again. Tip number three for doing shadow work is past life regression. <laughs> so I talk about past life regression in those reincarnation videos that I recommended earlier in this video. So you can watch those after this. But what's important to remember about past life regression is this seems like an obvious tip, right? If I, we were just talking about how a lot of aspects of your shadow are coming from past lives, it would make sense that you would go to those past life memories, access them, see the aspect of the shadow self and integrate it on the spot. Okay. And this is actually really important work that I did when I was healing that pattern that I talked to you guys about in terms of being afraid of coming into my power. So that pattern was healed through my own regression work that I did on myself. It's called auto regression. So I started to do that healing and integration of the shadow from accessing past life memories. All right. So past life regression can be a really important tool in also doing shadow work. So if you want to go deeper into that again, check out the, the reincarnation videos that I, that I talked about before. Tip number four is childhood review. <laughs> so in this tip, what you're going to do is you're going to use this exercise that I'm going to tell you. It's a journaling exercise. You're going to use it to spot aspects of your shadow that were born in this childhood as opposed to past lives. All right. This is a really simple journaling exercise. Also, it's going to give you a review of your childhood and it's going to allow you to spot those shadow aspects that you may not be aware of right now. So here's the journaling exercise. You're going to ask yourself three questions again, me and the three questions. You're going to ask yourself three questions. The first question is, was I accepted, completely accepted. Okay. So was I completely accepted by those around you? Right? So was I completely accepted in my, as a child, right? The second question is what was expected of me? What was expected of me from your parents specifically? All right. What was expected of me? And the third question is what behaviors and emotions were judged by my parents? Okay. What behaviors and emotions were judged by my parents? This is a really important question because you know, the behaviors and emotions that were judged by your parents for, for certain created some sort of, of shadow aspect in you. Just like, like the example that I gave of the little sensitive boy who, when the parents started to say, stop crying, you cry like a girl, what happened? He was being judged. 
And so when he was being judged, he repressed. Okay. So, so that's another crucial question. What behaviors and emotions were judged by your parents? When you do this three question exercise, you're going to be introduced right into certain aspects of your shadow self and how they were created. And that'll be another great way for you to work through it. When you spot the, the past life, uh, the, not the past life, when you spot the shadow aspects, then the work is easier because again, when I'm aware of something, 80% of the work is already done when I become aware of it. So when you become aware of the shadow aspects, then all you have to do is you just have to make an intention. You call on your guides and your soul and you just say, it's my intention to heal and bring light to these shadow aspects that I've just put in my journal. I want to heal and bring light and integrate these shadow aspects that I have just written about in my journal. Okay. And when you do that meditation work, that intention work, you're integrating your beautiful shadow. You're bringing it in. You're casting light on the shadow. And that means that the shadow gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And it means that it's going to affect your life less and less and less. Okay. So there's tip number four to go deeper on the childhood review. If you have a hard time doing childhood stuff, uh, here's a video I did recently on the inner child in that video. I, I help you go into these childhood things specifically going into first chakra healing, which is essentially where all of the judgments, early judgments of your parents and all that early programming is contained in the first chakra. So this video is going to help you. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box below. If you want to go deeper into the childhood healing after watching this video. And I also have this meditation here. It's a first chakra healing meditation. It's on my website. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box below too. I have a bunch of free guided meditations. You can download this one specifically for the first chakra, and it's going to help you fully heal all that childhood stuff. Okay. So these are two good resources for you to check out after watching this video. Tip number five is retrieve your gifts. <laughs> so I've been talking more about the negative aspects of the shadow because those are usually the ones that really affect us the more. But remember that I said that the shadow isn't just negative aspects. It's also positive aspects. That's where your untapped gifts and talents are located also in your, sh in your shadow. And so in this fifth tip, you're going to discover those gifts and talents that you've kind of suppressed or you've pushed aside. All right. And the way that I love to do this, I love to do this with two, there's two different ways you're, you're going to start doing this. One is a journaling exercise. Okay. And in this journaling exercise to start discovering these untapped, uh, untapped gifts and talents, you're going to do a journaling exercise where you ask yourself one crucial question. That's going to start taking you there to untapped, uh, to your untapped gifts. And the crucial question is this. If I weren't afraid, what would I do with my life? Ah, <laughs> if I weren't afraid, what would I do with my life or said another way? What would I do with my life if I weren't scared shitless? <laughs> All right. You see this question, this question is going to take you into those untapped gifts and talents in the same way that I was afraid to step into my power. Why was I afraid to step into my power? I was afraid to step into my power because I had all these shadow aspects operating here. Okay. So if I, if I weren't scared, what would I do? Okay. That's going to start taking you in to your gifts and your talents, and you can start journaling about them and start bringing them into the light of your conscious awareness and developing them more. Okay. The second way for you to retrieve gifts and talents is also a great way. I love using it and that's called shamanic journeying. Okay. So shamanic journeying, you can do this. It's a guided meditation. It's, a, it's called a journey. And what it does is you're either guided by a shaman or you could be guided by an actual shaman, or you can just look up shamanic journeying tracks on YouTube. There are a ton of them. And what shamanic journeying does is it takes you into this guided meditation, into an altered state of consciousness. You go into this guided meditation where you retrieve gifts, talents, you retrieve messages, you retrieve guidance, all kinds of things are retrieved during a shamanic journey. All right. And this is a great tool for you to kind of bring your gifts and talents from your shadow into the light of day. Okay. So retrieve your gifts and talents. Remember you've got a lot of untapped potential in that shadow. It's time to bring it into the light. 
All right, beautiful soul, now I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comments below which tip that I shared about shadow work, which tip resonated with you the most. Let me know in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website and download my free guided meditations. They're pretty powerful. And check out these videos on reincarnation and past lives. These are gonna be a great supplement for this video here. All right, beautiful soul, I love you. I'm out.